Hey guys, what is up, Jack of all trades here, and guess what came in the mail? Well, my overflow box. So this is going to be my inner overflow box for the fish tank. It's uh, the small Lee's specimen container, and um, this is about $8 on Amazon. And let me show you right here. Uh, this is it. I've already drilled some holes, I've recorded all that. And um, basically how this is going to function is uh, it'll sit inside the aquarium. Let me just put some aquarium water in it so that it doesn't uh, float. And the water will be able to flow in through the holes. As you can see, I have, I'm going to have it uh, set higher than what it is now because I don't want the water level to be visible. Um, so the water will flow in through the holes and then a tube will carry it with the siphon outside of this box into another plastic box that I'll have on the outside. And uh, then that'll come down to the sump, obviously, which will be under. So to demonstrate the flow, I'll just tip this over. You can see it has, you know, a decent, a really, really good amount. And uh, these are 7.30 seconds holes, if you're wondering. And uh, speaking of which, let's go, uh, let's go drill these holes. I mean, I already recorded it and stuff, but yeah, let's, let's play that footage now. All right, so now I'm going to make the required modifications to my inflow box. And as you can see here, I've marked some holes to drill. I'm going to be drilling these holes on the bottom right here because that is right above my water line. And yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. I might just adjust these two holes to be a little lower. In fact, I'll do that right now because as long as water is able to flow into the overflow box, the task has been accomplished. So there you can see they're on a pretty much straight line now, the, to the last bottom row, because this is the trim level in my aquarium, and I want their level to be barely higher than that. So now, what I'm going to do is just spin the drill bit on each piece, or each hole, sorry. So if let's just take that hole, for instance, just spin it on there. Uh, to create a pilot hole just so that um, one I don't get tape everywhere and two the drill bit doesn't scatter around when I'm drilling so I'll just do that I'll probably fast forward after I'm done talking and then we can get started Now I'll also be drilling holes on the side as well, so I will I will do those later though. All right, now let's take off the tape, and as long as I can see where I'm supposed to drill, yeah, I have a couple of indents here and there. Let me just tape that back on to make some better ones quickly. Because you want to make sure you know exactly where the holes will be once you remove your template. Just to make like a scratch or something with the drill bit. Then, you see now. Yeah, you can see that there are clear indications of where the holes, or where, where I want the holes to be in accordance with my water level. So now, let me attach this drill bit to my drill, and let's get started. So the key to this is uh, just holding it steady and don't rush it. Let the drill bit do the work. So uh, just watch. I already tried it on some test plastic. So let's see how this goes. Just line it up with your mark, and then... See how I mean it took there to drill one hole, but see it's a nice clean drill hole thing. And you can brush off any of the built up stuff around it. And of course if it's in the middle, just take your drill bit and just Now I forgot to mention, you can also use a soldering iron for this. I might have mentioned it in any previous videos about making holes and stuff. Uh, for instance, my um drawer table thingy, but um, you can also use a soldering iron, just heat it up, then you can poke holes. It's probably easier than this, but um, 
for me, at, at least I have to bring more stuff upstairs to my garage, and then um, this is just easier for me to do because uh, this drill is really nice. So now I'll continue drilling these holes, and then we can uh, line up the template again and then get the holes on the side. And yes, I know these holes aren't even, but I'll add more if that annoys you, or if there's not enough flow, I can add one right in the middle, right there. But for now, we'll just stick with the ones I've made and uh, see how those go. Now I'll also probably be going over these holes with a um, knife deeper thingy, or just like my pocket knife, my unboxing knife to deeper the holes. Let's continue drilling. All right, got more holes drilled. And don't worry, I'll be washing this off and everything, don't worry about that. All right, so now that I've uh, drilled all the holes here, let me show you. I have a couple on the front, a couple on the sides. that are about at the trim of my tank. Also, here's how I calculated it, by just putting it like so, and they're about right level with it. It's not, it's not awfully off, so I'll be happy with it for now. This was a budget build, so let's put it in and see. Because I mean, the water level is low right now, so nothing might be actually going into the box. Also, you need to make sure the water level doesn't cause it to float, as you can see right here, since there's nothing in it. So, I just add some water. So it's it's, it's at least going to be full to the holes. Uh, how am I going to do this? Hold on. Yeah. I have to move this lid a little bit to give me some clearance. But let's fill it with a little bit of water. Still gonna float there. And you get the idea. Now this water level is gonna be a little higher than it is now. But so what we'll just do is lower it into the aquarium. And as you can see, we're getting a, a, a pretty good amount of flow. So I'm I'm pretty impressed with that. You can see that. The holes are a bit, these are 730 seconds holes. And you can see that they're big enough to now allow a good amount of drain. So that means they should accept plenty of, um, plenty of, what, intake as well from the pump. So, also, the pump um, is not going to be obviously pumping 550 up to the, up to the tank since, you know, head height. This has a max height of 2.5 meters, which we are well, which we are well within. So, so I, I predict it'll only be pumping about 300 to 400 gallons into the tank at the corner. So, and by that time, it's probably gonna slow down because I'm planning on the overflow being where the filter is right now and take being on that corner. But yeah, so now let's move on to my other overflow box. Alrighty guys, so here's my overflow box. So um, instead of recording it, I just decided to do it because um, I just felt it would be a little easier to explain. So basically, I just cut a hole in the bottom of this container, and as you can see, the O-ring is on the inside of the container, because that's where the water will be. And um, so I just screwed it in. So using so because the hole wasn't big enough to slip these threads through, I was able to screw it in so the O-ring would seal on the outside. Then I added some silicone on the, or on the inside, so the O-ring could seal on the inside. Then I added some silicone on the outside, so that um, if, if there were any leaks, I did leak test this, there are a couple of leaks, uh, those can be solved. And then we can also use some Teflon tape for when we are sealing these threads with um, our female adapter. So now let's go um, test fit this on the fish tank, if you can test fit it, and then we'll call it a day for this video. 
All right, so as you can see, this uh, this box is a little smaller than my um, internal overflow box, but that shouldn't matter because this bulkhead provides a lot of flow. Like here, I, I can't test it in the sink right now, but I'll I'll show you guys after it's after it's cured. Tripping on tools, uh, please clean up. <laughs> but um, yeah, so once this cures, we'll do a water test. I'll probably do that in the next episode. But yeah, here are my two overflow box things and if you're wondering how I'm gonna mount this you can see on my filter right now this is a Marineland hang on back one forgot what model specifically maybe you can see over there but um, I'm gonna use that bracket that it's using to stay up right now and hopefully uh, if I can extend that bracket a little you can see it's not perfect right now but I also have these like these wooden um, sticks I forgot you know, when you, you do barbecue or whatever. Um, but I can use those to extend it, maybe super glue it to the bracket. And then this will be hanging on the back, like right over here. And it fits perfectly in the gap behind my fish tank. And then the tube will carry water from there into here. It'll drain down to the sun. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.